You can buy a loft bed or bunk bed, but it's more fun to build one. Here's how. First, let's build a loft bed, a bed elevated above the ground, usually with a desk below. Start with eight 1x10s glued and screwed together to form four L-shaped corner posts. Let's add some color to make it a bit clearer. Next, we screw 10 shelves into the corner posts. These are also made from 1x10s, five on each side. We're not gluing the shelves into the corner posts because we want to be able to take this bed apart and easily move it. To make these posts more stable, we'll bolt a desk to the two back posts. Our desk is made with three 2x3s and a 1x12 board. Instead of, or in addition to, a desk, we can attach a long shelf higher up. Now we're ready to make the frame for the twin-sized mattress. Start with two beams spanning between and bolted to the two pairs of front and back corner posts. Each beam is made from a 2x4 screwed and glued to a shorter 1x6 that aligns with the 1x10 posts. We then screw 12 1x4 slats into the 2x4 beams, forming a base for the mattress. Well, it's just about done, but we need a ladder to get up to the mattress and a guard on the front edge so that the sleeper doesn't roll off and sue the architect. Actually, this is a good place to insert a disclaimer about the risks you take when you build such a project and how the designer assumes no liability for anything bad that could happen to the builder or the user of such a bed. The top of the ladder and guard rails are bolted, not just screwed, into the bed frame so that they won't pull out. Add a mattress and you're ready to go. Of course, there are other things that can be attached to this loft bed. We added two metal closet rod brackets, a closet rod, and made a double shelf from a single 8 foot 1 by 12. Let's hang some shirts, roll in a chair, oh, and move it into position on our carpet. All done! Now it turned out that we needed to alter the design and make a bunk bed instead of a loft bed. So let's go back to the four corner posts and see how the design and construction change. Well, we really shouldn't build this on our carpet. We don't have room for shelves, but we take four of them that were originally intended for the loft bed, turn them on edge, and bolt them to the corner posts so that they act as braces. Beams are bolted into place just like they were in the loft bed, except a second pair will support the lower mattress. 12 one by 4 slats are screwed into the top beams and 12 more into the bottom beams. The ladder and guard are fastened just as they were for the loft bed. And then the two mattresses are placed over the slats. We'll put up the closet rod and shelves like before. We can't roll in a chair, but we can hang some shirts and put the carpet back in place. Well, so much for schematic drawings. Here's how we actually built the bed. First, we assemble the lumber, mostly 1x10s, but also 1x4s, 1x6s, 2x4s, and 2x3s. You can see how the 1x10s will be joined to form the L-shaped corner posts. We use an old Craftsman radial arm saw bought in the early 1960s, but you should use something a bit more modern, most likely a compound miter saw. We cut the ends off all the lumber to be sure that the ends of our pieces are straight and true. We carefully measure and mark each piece that needs to be cut. And then we cut the boards. After all the boards are cut, we carefully measure and mark all the locations of shelves and all the holes that need to be drilled for screws. In fact, it's useful to mark the position of all the lumber framing into each piece. We drill holes for screwed connections so that the screw will pull the side member, the piece with the drilled hole, firmly into the main member. Here you can see the holes drilled for screws. We use a countersink drill bit so that the wood screws will be set more or less flush with the surface of the boards. The countersink is not used for bolted connections. Let me glue some of these things together like these L's. These screws over here, every foot or so, just to hold it together. And there's a line of glue over here, so these things are quite solid. There's a couple of other things we glue together, like this shelf unit that will be an auxiliary for the closet. 
There's more of the L's. The other three. And then the ladder, which gets glued together with some three inch screws, two in each rung on each side. And this special back shelf, which is also an extra. So now we're going to use the polycrylic. I have an old little stirrer. I'm going to stir it around a little bit. Not quite sure if I need to. I'll do it anyway. Then use the brush. Wipe that off. And let's do the ladder. Go down the rungs. Sides. So the bed's all packed along with the desk and the chair. Here are the L's. And then the shelves. And then the planks holding up the mattress are in here. <coughs> along with the desk and the chair. And here's the final product all screwed and bolted together. Let's stop the film here to identify exactly where the bolts are. We used carriage bolts with a smooth round head on one side and a hex nut and washer on the other side. For the bunk bed, three things get bolted together. The 1 by 10 braces are fastened with quarter inch by 2 inch carriage bolts. The 2 by 4 beams that support the planks under the mattresses are fastened with 5 16 inch by 3 inch carriage bolts. And finally, the top rails of the ladder and the other 2 by 3 post holding the 1 by 6 guard each get a single 3 8 inch by 5 and a half inch carriage bolt that goes through the long dimension of the 2 by 3 rails as well as the 2 by 4 plus 1 by 6 composite beam. Want some detailed instructions? Find my free manuals at oxhorndesign.com. Follow the links to other designed work and from there to furniture. At least that's the way it was set up when I made this video.